Welcome to Get Indie Gaming and to the August edition of my monthly crowdfunding showcase countdown. Before we delve any deeper, let's take a few moments to see how those games featured last month did against their funding goals. Well, this is super rare, but all five featured last month were successfully funded. The number one away, the survival series more than doubled up on its goal of 60,000 Canadian dollars, bringing in just over 135,000. Kingdoms of the Dump raised a little more than 76,000 US dollars versus a target of 60k, while Arcade Racing Legends managed to raise in 68,000 euros against their 25,000 euro aim. This saw a number of stretch goals reached, including additional cars, tracks, and a split player mode being added to the development roadmap. Theropods also made it over the threshold of 20,000 euros by just over two grand, and Fiction Sphere brought in a shade under 30,000 US dollars against their campaign aim of 20,000 bucks. Will this month be as successful? Let's go ahead and check out my picks for August. Ladies and gentlemen, right here under the big top, something you've never seen before! The greatest clown game to hit the internet! At number 5 and back on Kickstarter after failing to reach its goal at the first attempt in February 2017, AO the Clown has plenty days left on the campaign as this video airs and at this time the team have just about met their aim of taking in more than 17,000 US dollars. AO the Clown is a 2D side-scrolling platformer that oozes charm and personality. AO, who's not your average clown, finds himself thrust into an adventure to find his lost dog and Bo, his best friend. Taking inspiration from 90s era platformers such as Super Mario, Yoshi and Little Big Planet and Kirby, AO the Clown is certainly a colourful looking affair and I'm fairly taken by its all-round cute art direction particularly in the design and overall look of AO himself and the other characters and enemies you'll come across over the course of the journey. With a demo available to play, the platforming feels solid and varied with numerous mechanics that feel spot on for what AO is looking to achieve. It's coming with an expected launch date of August 2020 by way of Steam. Stretch goals at the moment include a hidden ending, a fishing minigame and perhaps a port onto consoles. This campaign wraps up this coming September the 7th. At number 4, Dreamscaper is the debut game from San Francisco based developers Afterburner Studios, a team comprising a number of individuals who previously worked at the likes of 2K and Epic. While the campaign still has plenty of time to run at the time this video goes live, it's firmly secured the $25,000 the team were asking for, with it being well on the way in reaching the stretch goal of $40,000 needed to secure a port onto the Nintendo Switch. Dreamscaper is an ARPG roguelike with elements of brawlers, top-down shooters and dungeon crawlers. You play as Cassidy, a young woman who finds herself dealing with depression and harrowing nightmares. You'll take Cassidy through her waking days where she looks to build meaningful relationships with those around her. The memories you form in the waking world can be harnessed within her dreams, with the two states of being asleep and awake being connected. What you do in one will have an effect in the other. With a demo available for PC, combat feels tight, needing a fine sense of positioning, reaction and timing skills. It has a launch timeline of some point in Q1 of next year on the PC first, with other platforms to follow based on the success of the funding campaign, which ends September 6th. At number 3, Vivid is looking to raise 8,500 US dollars and with around two weeks to go from the date this video goes live, the team are in the region of 20% of achieving this goal. Vivid, where you play as the titular character, is aside from her rosy cheeks, a colourless girl with a colourful personality. Joining her is Spirit the Dog and you'll need to work together using their combined powers to overcome obstacles blocking your path or help those in need along the way. As the name suggests, the game is centred around colours, with performing platforming, attacks, puzzles and more being affected by the character's current colour, which you change by way of interacting with coloured blocks around the level. For example, fighting enemies the same colour as you offers up double the damage and colour can also affect how you interact with certain objects. It's an interesting and unique take and having spent a short time with the available demo, I can understand where the developers are coming from and how their colour interactions are so fundamental to the overall experience. 
Vivid's campaign finishes this coming September the 7th. I have seen the unimaginable. Horror. God. Is slain. His corpse a corrupting poison. The wilds lie stained in shadow, and humanity hovers on the brink of desolation. This month's runners up, Alder's Blood, is looking to raise what I think is a fairly modest goal of 12,000 US dollars. Developers Shockwork Games describe the game as offering a fusion of dark Victorian fantasy mixed together with the Wild West, all within a turn-based combat system with stealth elements. Expect it out in early 2020 on PC and Switch, with it also coming to the Xbox and PlayStation systems if stretch goals are met. In Alder's Blood, it's almost the end of days for humanity, and you'll take on the role of monster slayers called Hunters, specifically trained to deal with and kill off hordes of nasties sent to destroy what's left of the human race. It's up to you to bring peace back to Earth. My first impressions of Alder's Blood, like perhaps many of you, is how it all puts me firmly in mind of something like Bloodborne, particularly the main characters that are impressively put together. I'm also drawn into the combat mechanic and stealth gameplay. The developers have even added wind-based elements, whereby enemies are able to track your scent across the map. Enemies from werewolves to vampires and more will use this to help hunt you down, and yet you can also use it to your advantage by drawing monsters into traps and ambushes you lay down to defeat them. The Alders Blood campaign has until September the 5th, and it looks to offer fans of turn-based combat games something that's just a little bit different. The number one for August in our crowdfunding countdown comes from Greg Lobanoff, who you might remember brought us the delightful Wonder Song. Chicory, A Colourful Tale is Greg's follow-up game where he's working with sound designer M. Halderstunt from Night in the Woods and composer Lena Rain from Celeste. Fully funded within its first 24 hours and with more than three weeks to go, the campaign has already well surpassed the 30,000 US dollar goal and I'd expect Chicory to raise somewhere in the region of a sizable six-figure amount come the end date on September 14th. As some of you will remember, I'm a big old fan of Wonder Song and having played the demo of this follow-up, I'm pleased to say Chicory builds from that experience and offers an even greater sense of appeal than its predecessor. I also spent some time playing this with my 8 and 5 year old children who likewise thought it's all super fun with the younger of the two remarking it reminded her of many colouring books she's had over the years which is a fair and truthful observation. At a more adult level the demo shows the witticisms and general writing from Wonder Song is back. The villagers you meet are all having their own quirks and individual touches. From what I've seen and played of Chicory A Colourful Tale, it could very well end up being quite magnificent. And with that, many thanks for watching. Be sure to press that like button and now would be an awesome time to subscribe if you haven't done so already. With plenty more indie game videos to come this August, I look forward to welcoming you all back here soon for more indie game videos.